I have another power station I want to share with you today. This is the Sanfu OPS 600, a 600 watt power station. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple things I want to mention. First off, I want to thank the company Sanfu for reaching out to me and offering to send this unit to me so that I could share it with you. The next thing is uh, we're in the middle of a hurricane. Again, Hurricane Lee is upon us right now. I'm watching closely to make sure I don't lose my power as I uh, do this demonstration. The nice thing is if I do lose my power, I can use this unit to keep on going. So I'm working through that as we go. So as always, is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this unit. I'll go over its physical and performance specification. I'll go over its operation and I'll share my experiences with you. Just before we take a closer look at the Sanfu OPS 600 power station, I wanted to share with you what it came with, which is just two things, the manual and the charging unit. That's it. Okay, now I'm going to give you all the physical dimensions and weight for this in the video description below, both in Imperial as well as metric. What I will say about this physically is that it comes equipped with a ternary lithium ion style of battery and the battery capacity is rated at 506 or 576 watt hours. All right, now as far as the performance specifications for this unit, first we'll We'll start with the input. So the primary input charging is done through this 5521 port on the side that will accommodate the uh, included charging unit, but you can also back that up or add to it, if you will, using this port here, which is a USB type C fast charge port rated at 100 watts input and output. So I was able to combine both together 100 watts and through here, the charging unit on the side, the charging unit on the side provided me 97 watts, but combined I was able to get up to 194 watts, which greatly reduced the time it took to charge the unit. Now, as far as output, the unit does have a max output of 600 watts, that's its rating, but it does have a surge uh, rating of 1200 watts. I wasn't able to test to see if it would go to a full 1200 watts before it uh, tripped out. I did check it with a heater fan and it tripped out at about 875 watts. So it could be that it was just that fan. I just didn't have any other device that had that kind of a surge need that I could test it with. Now, as far as output ports go, let's start with the AC. So you can see right here, there are six, which I found a bit unusual for the size of this unit, six AC ports that you can use. Uh, three of them have the grounding plug, and of course the unit's not grounded, but it, they do accommodate uh, plugs with the grounding uh, prong on it, and three that don't. And of course you can use all six if you want, as long as, uh, you know, well, you, you can't go greater than the 600 watts, of course. So you have to think about that, how you would get six AC units that would wouldn't exceed 600 watts or six AC appliances that wouldn't exceed 600 watts. Chances are you'll never use all six of those at the same time. Now there are two USB type A uh, ports right here. We're at the top. I'm doing this upside down. Here they are ups upside down. So two USB type A ports and two USB type C fast charge ports. One is rated at 75 watts and the other one rated at 100 100 watts. There are, strangely enough, people, they're still being included, three of the uh, 12 volt DC 10 amp 5521 ports running down the side here. And there is, and this is still useful because there are units that can still make use of this. A uh, they, well, different different makers call them different things. They're, they're calling that a, a cigar lighter port in their in their manual, car lighter, cigarette lighter, whatever you want to call. So you can still have one of those, and uh, yeah, there are still devices that would make use of that. All right, I want to go through the operation of the unit for you. Now, this is going to take just a little bit of time because what I found from my experience is that there were a few idiosyncrasies. Uh, that's the best way to describe it. Idiosyncrasies, things that are 
a little bit different about this unit from a lot of the other units that I have tested. So to start with, there are three power buttons, as you can see. First off, this is the uh, primary on and off for the whole unit. Uh, it's a press and hold. You'll see the display light up. Now let's just talk about the display very quickly. So what we're showing is a status bar over here. There's an icon for the amount of power left in the battery. There's a percentage of power left and there are minutes left charging. Now, of course, it's showing an arbitrary 999 minutes at this point because there's nothing drawing off of the unit itself. So it, it, it has no calculation for how long the battery is going to last. Yeah. And you can see how quickly it times out. So to bring it back up, it's just a quick tap of the button itself. Now, if you want to power up the USB type C or the USB ports on the side, the same button does both. So you tap it again and now you should see right up here, USB type A ports are active. So they're ready to go. If you want to power up the DC ports, the 5521 ports, you press that button quickly on, on its own and it's showing that they are ready to go, including the 12 volt car port up here is ready to go. If you want to power up the, the uh, uh, AC units, that's a press and hold. All right, so now everything is powered up. All the ports are ready to go. What you're going to see right here is the output power, and I'll point to this again in a moment. But right now you can see it's settling in at 4 watts. That's what you call a, uh, a parasitic drain that the inverter has on the battery. So in converting DC power over to AC power, there is some loss. So you're losing 4 watts um, as just sitting here. It's nothing plugged into these units just sitting here, it's consuming uh, th that amount of power. I say that for a reason because, of course, if you're not using these, turn it off. Just turn this off because you don't need to be wasting that power. It's not doing you any good. So in fact, I will turn that off now. So it's a long press. That'll turn off. You can see the power out drop back down to zero. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the USB ports on this side because this is where some of the real incons uh, inconsistencies, that's probably the best, no, I, I guess idiosyncrasies, the diff what's different about this. So what I have arrayed around me right now are a variety of devices that will plug into these ports. So I'm going to start with the basic, which of course is my cell phone. That's a USB-A, so I have to tap it, show again, USB-A is lit up. I can plug that into one of the two ports. That should start to climb momentarily as the uh, device recognizes the phone or the phone recognizes the device either way. And you should see this is starting to display that it is charging. And um, yeah, five watts. It's an older phone, so it's only drawing five watts. It's not a fast charge phone by any means. So that's fine. Now I have my older tablet. Now this older tablet has, it can kind of give away its age, a micro USB plug. So let's just find which one of those. Here it is, the micro USB plug, and I'll plug that in. And so here's one of the things about this unit. Nothing happening. My, my tablet is not charging. And what I discovered is if I want to activate that second uh, USB type A port, I have to tap it again and when you, or tap the on-off button. Now you can see it's climbing. So now we have a combined output of 9, 10, I think it rounds off somewhere around 11. So, uh, okay, so today it's going to round off at 10 watts. So that is the phone and the tablet both charging. Now, I have one device that I can use the, the fast charge, USB type C fast charge ports, and that is one of my Wubin lights. This will accept the fast charge. So I'm gonna plug that in to the top port here, which is maximum 100 watts output, and you'll see it's starting to climb. So uh, it's starting to figure out what it wants to settle in at. So it looks like it's gonna settle in at 21 watts total. So a little red light in the center of the on off button is indicating that it is charging. So we have all the ports. Now, if I had a second USB fast charge uh, device that would accept it and I had a cable for it, I could plug it into the other port so that I have all four ports in use. I would again have to tap the on off button or the USB button to get that second port to operate. So 
just a little bit different. Not sure why it is done that way, but uh, there, there you go. That's what it is. So here's what I want to show next. You may consider this a deficiency in the design. Uh, it's just, I, I think it's just something to be aware of. So over here on my right, your left, it's, it's showing out. So what it's showing is the amount of power going out of the unit. But if I want to plug in a, a uh, charging unit for pass-through charging, let me just do that now. So this is the charging unit for that uh, uh, charger that came with it. Let me plug that in. You don't have a display. Well, what it's showing is it's showing you what's going in over here. So it's changing the display for input. And I think this will max out at 94 or 97 is in my... Um, when I did the, the demonstration or I did my testing, it maxed out at 97 watts input. So what we're seeing now is 77 watts input. And the reason being is because it's calculating the difference between the input and the output. So 97 or 77, there is 97 watts going in. But when you take away the 20 or 21 watts going out, you're left with 77 watts going in. So it's just a little bit of a, I'm going to call it a deficiency because I would like to see uh, the display show you both. And so, so you don't have to calculate what's going in, what's going out very quickly. So 78, yeah, so it's starting to climb a little bit, but you get the point there right now. Okay, so those are just some of the things about the operation. Now let me share some of my experiences with it. All right, let me begin this by saying overall the performance for this unit has been very good. I've had this for longer than I would most units when I'm testing before I reviewed it just because I had to get used to some of those as I refer to them as idiosyncrasies. I had quite a bit of back and forth with the company on this to make sure I was understanding how this operated correctly. And that leads me to one of my first things and that is the manual itself. It is Terrible, honestly. Now, when I look at it on the surface, uh, it seems to be well laid out, but a lot of the things that I've just talked about, I mean, it's, it's pictorially there, there is some information there, but it is deficient in a number of ways. Things like how to use that USB on off button and what you need to do to get all the ports operating. It's just not listed in this manual. So I don't consider the manual very good at all. Here's something else I noticed about it, and this is not so much a judgment as it is a question. There's nothing on this manual, and there's nothing on this device itself that suggests the name Sanfu, the company from which this came. I don't know what that means, other than maybe this is a generic device produced by some other company, and Sanfu has rebranded as their own, but had did not put the brand either on the manual or on the device itself. Uh, that doesn't mean uh, anything negative necessarily. It's just, again, something I want you to be aware of. Uh, the other thing is the manual says that this unit has a one-year warranty, but when you go to their website, they list a two-year warranty. Now, I, I don't have that discrepancy worked out, but what I know from other devices is if you register this unit with them online, they'll, lift, they'll extend the warranty from whatever the basic one is, in this case, one year, to a longer period of time, in this case, two years. So I don't know if that's the case here or not. Again, just a little bit of missing information. Now, speaking about missing information, uh, what else did I want to say about it? Okay, yes. I asked the company if it had pass-through charging, and they said, yes, it does. Now, pass-through charging and UPS function are similar but different, USB, uh, st UPS standing for uninterrupted power supply. And the company said, in fact, it has both. Uh, it, I'll have to take them at the word, but here's my understanding of what each of those things are. Yes, it has pass-through charging. In other words, you can charge this unit at the same time it's being discharged, charging other units. Uh, you saw that in the display. You can see where it calculated the difference. 
pass or UPS is different. In UPS, the circuitry bypasses the battery and the AC power going in is directly delivered to whatever the output device is. So it's putting no strain, no wear on the batteries at all. At least that's my understanding of how UPS operates. We didn't see that here. I did see pass-through charging but I cannot prove, or, or I can't actually deny it either, that it has a, a UPS function. Again, I'll take the company at their word for that. Um, yeah, so those are the basic things that I want to say about this. My overall experience is, is that it's a very functional unit. It looks a lot like a lot of the other units on the market, It's j but it just operates slightly different. Oh, here's something I haven't showed you. Uh, it's got a huge LED light on the back. So, uh, you know, I know people can take them or leave them. For the most part, I don't feel the need to have a UPS or uh, an LED area light on this. If you're gonna have one, this is as good as any because this provides an area light. I can just, now again, we're here in Hurricane Lee. Uh, I don't think we're getting hit as hard as other parts of the province are, but power is out all around us. I still have power, but should the power go out, this is going to provide a whole lot of light in my kitchen or living room or wherever I need the light at for a good long period of time. So yeah, I guess it does have a function. And if you're going to have a light, you might as well have a good area light as opposed to one that looks and or operates like a flashlight. I got a lot of flashlights and this will recharge them for a long period of time. Okay, that's my experiences using this unit. I will provide you the links to where you can take another look at this unit. I'll provide you all the information in my video description below. I'll uh, offer open it up to you now. If you have any comments or questions about this unit, please put them in the comment section below. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.